Hello and welcome to the Peace Talk, this time with Hannes Jung. Hannes Jung started his academic career in physics at Freiburg University, being a member of EMC experiment at CERN. As a postdoc, he worked at Hera Ring, and Hera in this sense is not the ancient Greek goddess of marriage and woman, but Hera means research at the Large Hadron Collider, which is a, a part, also a part of the European Organization for Nuclear Research. He was a guest uh, professor in Antwerp, and he's the author of several Monte Carlo event generators. He's also the founding father of Science for Peace, which is a forum for discussions among scientists to promote uh, science as a driver for peace. Dear Hannes, I'm very thankful that you found the time, and it's a great honor and pleasure uh, having you here. Thank you very much for inviting me to this talk about science for peace. Maybe a short, quick correction. The, the Hera um, ring was built at Adesi in Hamburg, and it was for studying the structure of the proton. It was not the, the ring with, which is connected with CERN, but in principle, it's, it's OK, because I also worked with the LHC at, at CERN later on. I'm I'm curious, and uh, uh, before this interview started, I did a little bit of homework, and uh, I was curious uh, what is actually this uh, uh, large hadron collider. And then when I saw uh, it's a huge machine, like a huge pipeline, uh, where you put some uh, protons, um, particles uh, in uh, that, and they are colliding, and it's like uh, some of them of the research I call it the largest freezer or the largest vacuum machine, and so you can do research on on how the world began, the Big Bang began, and many interesting stuff. So could you please explain to the audience what did you actually do there, and yeah, what's the yeah, reason? So I mean, the, the research is fundamental research. It is about fundamental laws of nature, fundamental laws of matter. And what is studied at, at the LHC is at extremely high energies, the, the highest energies when which are available in a laboratory at the moment, protons are collided with, with protons. And then, as we know from yeah, the Einstein energy mass relation, when there is a very high energy, new particles can be created. And this is one of the topics when, which is studied at the, the LHC. And for example, in 2012, so, so 12, 10 years ago, there was the, the discovery of the last not found particle in the so-called standard model, the, the Higgs boson, which is responsible to uh, create masses or give mass to, to the particles, and which is also responsible that the whole theory is, is consistent. So this was one of the last things where, which was found. I was more interested in studying strong interaction. So that what 99.99% of the uh, universe is made of strong interaction between protons or between the, the quarks, which are the constituents of the protons. So it's I, I find it an extremely fascinating and, and interesting area. And yeah, it is also bringing together scientists from all over the world. And then this is one of the most exciting and most important things in apart from from the actual research that really people from very different areas from from very different countries with with different cultural background work together to solve some of the most pending fundamental problems of, of nature but i think we come to to that point later on <laughs> Yeah, it sounds it sounds very interesting. And um, so, um, how did your um, academic journey begin? Uh, what did motivate you to study? Uh, yeah. Yes. In this, when I saw your question, I, I was really thinking back, and it was not so straight forward than that I ended up in, in physics. So I 
grew up in an academic environment. My father was uh, was a pastor and educated me with with uh, some ethic principles. But as a as a young boy, I was mainly interested in electronics, music, and trying to build a radio to, to listen to music amplifiers and all that. And when we had physics in school. I had extremely bad grades. It, I found it extremely uninteresting. And even the, the teacher told my mother at one point, he has just no feeling about physics, no motivation, no nothing. And at the end, it be, uh, became a bit different. I uh, made it for my pros- profession and I liked it very much. During the, the school time, I was also very interested in, in politics. And I was considering also to study history or, or political science. But then I got very much frustrated when I had good arguments and thought it, it is convincing that people just said, yes, your arguments are fine, but we just don't follow your your argumentation and we uh, think differently and that frustrated me terribly and uh, decided and I will do something where there is a clear decision what is right and what is wrong given the the arguments that I learned later that also in physics it is not always (laughs) the case that, that it's so easy this was another story but yeah in this at, at the end brought me to to study of physics and it was it was fascinating because i liked the 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 uh, study very much but then during my diploma thesis i had a chance to visit CERN, and this was unbelievable because it was in the 1980s it was the cold war time and there were people working together from very different countries. There were people, of course, from the European countries, but uh, West European countries, just uh, say it more precisely. But then there were also people from the former GDR and from Russia and, and also from, from China. And I, I thought this is unbelievable that I can just talk to these these people and and ask them about many things, and the, this this was really totally fascinating for me. And and I thought, if that is possible in science, then science is really a way to to bridge between nations, between uh, cultures, and allow for for good communication. So this was really a a great great thing, and it was one has to to remember back. This this was the the time of the the big peace movements in West Europe and in, in in Germany with the Greifelder Appell and and all that, where people were against the the um, stationing of of cruise missile and and the Pershing rockets because there was a fear then that this could escalate, and then in a environment we, we could just talk to to the other to the people from from sort of the the other side this was absolutely amazing and and unbelievable and i think the, this is this is still one of the great advantages of this kind of science and i think one what was important also at that time was that science was kept independent of political ideological uh, issues it was something when, which was standing out outside of that and of course we, we there were people with with very different political uh, ideas and, and opinions which made the whole thing interesting but the, this was not the, the question to to work together it was seen as an advantage than that we can have access to people with different ideas and this i found very very interesting i guess we come uh, in in the discussion a bit to 
uh, the the ideas of of CERN and and all these these um, laboratories. I mean, one has to imagine CERN was was built shortly after the the Second World War, ten years after the Second World War, as a initiative from scientists from countries who were just in in war against each other a few few years before. And they they tried to construct a center where they said we we want to overcome this this hate and 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 threats. We 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 want to work together for scientific questions to solve some of the important issues. And I think this this was really kind of a, a, a role model for all kind of um, cooperation, with, which included, yeah, at, at that time, even even Russia and and the, the GDR, and I mean now now there are also other examples. For example, the uh, Sesame project, with, which is a, a synchrotron light source project in the Middle East, where where for example people uh, people scientists from different countries work together. For example, there work scientists from Iran and Israel together on one, in one laboratory, in one council, sit side by side without killing each other. And this, this is just in, unbelievable and, and absolutely fascinating. And there is also an, another uh, laboratory now built in, in the, uh, Southeast Europe, say, uh, which is a uh, uh, laboratory uh, on, on cancer research, when, which involves uh, countries um, from, from the ex Yugoslavian uh, area, uh, Serbia, Albania, and, and uh, the, these countries to bring people together to work on some important issues and to bridge across all the nationalism and, and things with which bring people aside. So this, this was absolutely fascinating for me that this is possible. And at that time, it was, it was more or less clear than that I would like to stay in, in that field and, and do something along that, that line. Sounds very important and uh, very interesting, and um, it's also it it also is a, a very wonderful experience. Uh, I can imagine that uh, people from all over the world are gathering in one place, and um, yeah, despite the differences, you come together. You have a goal. You are curious, and you're doing the research. It's quite amazing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um. So, um, and you are uh, standing in a long tradition uh, of physicists that are part of a peace movement. Uh, for example, in 1955, uh, there was this um, uh, huge uh, Russell Einstein manifesto, for example, uh, and there are many others. For example, people who worked for this, um, what was it? Um, the 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 project the, the where they uh, created the uh, nuclear bomb, uh, the Manhattan yes, Project. Yes. Manhattan. Uh, they turned also into peace activists. Some of them. So uh, uh, and uh, also for the Vana Peace, I did uh, interviews with uh, Jürgen Altman and Edward Lozansky, mm -hmm. which are also physicists. So it's it's amazing that uh, from this so-called hard sciences, people. Uh, are curious and, and people are engaged in, in a peace movement and, and um, yeah, are quite um, well observing the, the situation all, uh, around the world and the danger that we are in as a, as a human, as a mankind. Yes, yes. Maybe, maybe it, is, it is also because scientists have developed the nuclear bomb. And this, I think, makes us all responsible that we should prevent that, that these things are 
ever again used. And so maybe, maybe then that is a, is a motivation, but I think again, one, one of the important thing in, in this international collaboration is really that one, one talks to each other. And I mean, then, then it is, it is nearly impossible to, to imagine that I will shoot some, some of, of the people I'm, I'm working with. So I believe that doing work together is also, even, even if, if it is not with the aim for, for peaceful coexistence, but it brings people together and, and it will create an atmosphere which at least makes, makes nationalistic conflict much more complicated. Absolutely, I totally agree. Yes, um, and there, this is um, something like um, I believe uh, there are boundaries. There are some boundaries that are not there. The nation states are just a construct, and uh, maybe it was necessary in the beginning, but now uh, we developed, and now we have to, to yeah, to we need to to install other other forms of. of coexistence and other forms of institutions but um yeah we will see how it develops definitely yes yes, yes. um so let's move on to my next question uh like i said in the beginning you are uh, the founding father of science for peace and uh what was here the initial idea of of science for peace uh how did it all start it um yes so maybe i have to go a bit back <laughs> to, to to get get this right. So I was active in in quite some some peace movements also in 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 my professional area in in the past. There was, for example, in the nineteen eighties, there was this this um, initiative from uh, Ronald Reagan, this strategic defense initiative. Uh, which where where he wanted to uh, use the airspace uh, for for weapons and developing uh, very strong lasers to to uh, destroy the the rockets from from the other side, and at that time there was already a question: How do we treat this? Because from from the from the purely scientific or, or physics questions, of course, th this could be an interesting uh, topic. But one has to ask, what what is it for? And do I do I want to spend my energy, my knowledge in developing something with, which is uh, destructive and and which which uh es can can lead to escalation to to the 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 third world war and there was a initiative where where then scientists signed and said no we don't work on projects with, which are connected with with this initiative we we refuse to to work on that then this was very important that there there was already such a such a statement from from scientists but even later on, there were a lot of discussions and, and activities on the uh, wars in, in the uh, 2000, 2002, 2003, the, the, where people from the science community also engaged and said, no, we don't want to participate in a war, then this is not uh, our our aim we want a, a peaceful world and launched signature campaigns so for example we had a, a signature campaign from scientists against the uh, iraq war not in our name when which was signed by several hundreds of, of scientists and got also some some quite uh, good good press uh, feedback so there, there, there was all, always um, 
initiative for a peaceful world. And then in, I think it was 2019, we started um, Initiative Science and Society at DAISY, where we wanted to have an international forum where we could discuss issues on in, in science, which are of relevance for the society. For example, we started with a uh, talk presentation by uh, Timo Daum on a CERN for artificial intelligence to illustrate a bit the complications and the danger and risks uh, artificial intelligence has. And we continued with, with a lot of other topics. We had discussions on the um, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. We had uh, discussions on the scientific exchange with Cuba and, and, and so on. Maybe then that is a, another topic we can talk later or separately for, for long. But this, this was an initiative which was very positive and, and well received by the international community, by a lot of scientists. And just at the end of 2021, we had a very fascinating and interesting talk by the former director of CERN, Rolf Hoyer, on science for peace, where he explained very convincingly the advantages and, and one what it is all about. And we were all very fascinated. And at that time, no, nobody ever thought that all this could, could break apart in just a very short time. Then, of course, uh, a few months later, it, it break apart and I was I was very surprised when what happened after the invasion of Russia in in Ukraine, which I think one, one always has to say it. Although it's I think it's obvious that when we we condemn this war and and then this is unjustified, this is a no go. But it happened, and. At that time, suddenly, the science organizations in, in Germany, but also in other countries, stopped all collaboration, all cooperation with, with Russia, put everything on ice. And even at, at Adesi, it was a further step that not only the, the, the cooperation was frozen. For example, all people from Russian institutes who were working at DAISY in the frame of the uh, XFAL, this, this European Free Electron Laser Project, they had to leave within a few days the, the institute. Other people who were working at DAISY since 20, 30 years, with Russian affiliation, but but living here, had to give up their their computer accounts. The the email address was was blocked. They they had no access anymore. And furthermore, all publications, all common publications with people with Russian affiliation or Belarusian affiliation, were banned. And I was affected by that because I, I worked since more more than a year on a publication with colleagues from, from Russia. And we just had it ready to be released when that came. So it was not possible to, to publish that together. And in, in addition to, to blocking this scientific uh, publication, there was the, the rule that people are not allowed to participate in any conference, even an online conference where people with Russian affiliation are attending and giving talks. One, one really has to, to sit back and, and imagine what, what that means. Before we had exchange, we, we were sitting together, we, we were talking, we were doing research. 
and, and suddenly there was a, a, a sharp cut where it was that no, there is no cooperation anymore. Of course, you can't do your, your private thing, but there is no possibility for, for official cooperation. So for example, also official emails were not allowed to be used to write to any of the Russian colleagues. So that, that was the, the situation where I then said, we cannot continue the science and society initiative because I'm not kick out people just because they, they have uh, a, a Russian um, email address. And that was the time where, where we stopped this, this initiative and started from, from scratch with this Science for Peace forum where we created a independent uh, web host where we uh, bought uh, a private Zoom account to be able to, to have Zoom meetings where we built up a separate email list and, and so on. So this was, this was really a, a shock for, for me and, and many other people that this could happen. And one, one also has to, to see that, that this was not only what was requested from the government. The government requested to freeze official cooperation projects. Okay, one can debate whether that is okay or not, but this is one thing, but, but to ban common publications, the, the, the essence of scientific work, this I found is something which is going too far. And then from, from this, this Science for Peace Forum, we launched also a, a petition protesting against, in our view, this too strong and unjustified restrictions, which got from some people, very good uh, feedback, very good response. Of course, other people did not like it, but at least in, it was a, a, a clear statement that one does not agree with, with, this, with this type of policy. Unfortunately, the, these rules are still in, in action. There is still no publication possible with DESI affiliation and a Russian uh, colleague. There's still the, the ban on, on common conferences. At, at CERN, it's a bit different. CERN did not ban and, and throw out uh, Russian colleagues, but there is, since, since the war started, there is a discussion how to treat the authorship, how to treat the affiliation of, of Russian colleagues. And that, that is still uh, ongoing and, and still not, not solved. Uh, I understand. And it's a very emotional and even tragic um, situation because um, um, Oberst Markus Reisnitz, uh, head of the research at the Austrian uh, defense uh, yeah. uh, minister, min ministry, um, uh, no, uh, Theresianum, uh, um, um it's a it's a defense or uh, military um uh, organization and he uh, stated in in one of his lectures that uh, uh, we have um uh informational warfare and a psychological warfare and um and the stories like like this that you are telling me now uh i can observe uh, in in a lot of other spheres uh, for example artists and musicians are also yes. banned and philosophers and also um i mean it's it's i i understand it as a leverage effect i mean this politics i understand it um the aim of it is uh to that the ordinary russians uh, suffer in order to put pressure on putin's regime 
in order to change the regime. I, I can understand it, but it's a harsh way of doing it. And, and it affects uh, a, a lot of innocent people and also a lot of critics. I mean, most of, of them are, are criticizing and condemning this, this Russian invasion. And suddenly they are affected with, in, in they're innocent in this sense. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, this is exactly the, the case. I mean, there were many campaigns and many uh, signature lists where, where Russian scientists signed opposing the, the, the war. I, I think it was in the past, it was very good that science was kept out of this political instrumentation. That, that one was just saying, the, this is independent this is about science not about what what is happening around us and i remember in in quite few cases we were also launching petitions protesting for example against uh, the the bombardment from uh, israel in in gaza we were we were even dis discussing that with with our israeli colleagues and they were some were, were openly supporting that, but th this was never a question that, that one should cancel the, the cooperation, even if people said, no, we, we, we don't support your opinion. We, we always thought th this, is, um, this is positive then that we can talk and that we can discuss and we can also better understand why people believe in, in this or in, in something else. But to, to put that, the, the, the political statement higher than, on, on a level higher than the scientific uh, interest, the, this I find extremely dangerous and uh, problematic. Um, yeah, there are many things to say here because um, it shows the hypocrisy of, of the Western institutions and Western politics, because uh, you mentioned the Gaza siege. But there is also the Saudi Arabian uh, regime, the, the theocracy there, and um, yes. and 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 many other uh, nation states we can mention and regimes we can mention, and the list goes on and on and on. And so, um, yeah, the, there is some sort of a double standard in in this sense. And um, and and you are right. Uh, where to draw the line? And and what is the line? Should we all obey? to one uh, religion or should we all say okay i'm for liberal values or it it is it is hard where to draw the line and and yeah it is it is quite hard um yeah i mean may, maybe ju just one one additional point for example people working at at easy or or at CERN, they have to sign um uh, agreement that the, the research is done for purely peaceful means and for the benefit of, of uh, humanity. I think the, the such statements are very important and, and are good, but I think that that should be enough then. This is a very basic statement and if, if somebody would, would violate this one one can argue and, and take measures but to go further detailed in in what people should should agree on and what not i i think is going too far um absolutely and um i mean uh like you said uh and and uh, I, I I can imagine that uh, you are working with sensitive information and maybe for developing uh, some sort of a weapon or maybe some sort of information that could put, for example, one nation state uh, be China or Russia or someone else in in a in a lead position in a in a good position, um, so they can steal some sensitive technology or, or knowledge. I mean, in this sense, I can understand. But this is a separate thing. This is not a political decision. It's a, you know, and then right. here I, I can understand that you have to restrict the knowledge and the, the information. Um, but yeah, also the, 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 but to be quite honest, um, for example, knowledge is up there. The, 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 
the academia is open, accessible, transparent, and it's up for debate. And, and this is what science is all about. Yes, definitely. I mean, especially in fundamental science, because I mean, we we don't have really sensitive um, issues when, when which have to be taken care of. There are, of course, side effects or side branches, for, for example, with radiation resistant electronics or things like that. But I think there, there are possibilities to treat that appropriately. But when, when it comes to, to really the, the research itself, there is nothing secret. I mean, it, it, it is about the fundamental laws of, of nature. So what, what I mean, there, there are, of course, secrets which we don't understand, but this should not hide from, should not be hidden from, from any of the, the other countries. We, 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 we really need the, the common effort to, to solve these problems. And I, I would even go a step further and, and argue, I mean, there, there are the, the issues on, on fundamental uh, science, big challenges, when, which are very interesting to, to find out. But at the moment, we are facing much more severe problems. I mean, we, we have the, the uh, climate change, the climate crisis, which demands that, that people work together to to solve that, not 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 only technologically than that one finds find solution, but but to to get the the whole thing under control, than that we reduce CO two emissions. And there, it doesn't depend whether they are done here or there. It is a global effect, and and there it it is a must then that people work together. Right, and for for such a such an enormous challenge it is unbelievable that that we spend time in this at, at the end irrelevant discussions because the 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 i believe the the problems we are facing are much more and, and more global than all all these these discussions on on publication strategy on who does what and perhaps even even on 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 the the international conflicts we are we are facing the problem whether the 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 world as it is has a chance to survive right and and that must bring at the end everybody together and try to to help to to solve these problems absolutely and maybe we can dig deeper also into the connection and interconnection between climate uh, crisis and and war and 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 why is it important to stop military activities um, but before we go into into this, um, I was very struck by a message that Professor Ivan Kachanovsky, I follow him uh, on uh, social media, and also I had a great interview with him. And um, he uh, said that um, one journal of his was rejected in a in a scientific uh, journal uh, journey uh, journal. Um, despite being approved by two academics, uh, scholars, uh, in the peer review process. So this means that um, his, uh, uh, this journal was overthrown um, and um, the editor who um, made the decision to accept the article learned about this decision that, the, the, uh, that his article was overthrown uh, only by Twitter. And uh, then he, he said an email, um, and this was a professor of international relations in a British university. So 
Um, it's not like a, <laughs> a criminal near institution. And uh, his evidence showed that um, 2014, the, there was a massacre in the, in the Maidan uprising and the, the shooters uh, um, were from government buildings and government controlled buildings at the time. And he showed all overthrown and so on and so forth. So um, he has uh, very sensitive empirical data um, so uh, his data was very sens sensitive and, and it, it is crucial in order to understand the conflict better and the, the actors that are involved. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite amazing that um, such a, a, a yeah, academic professor in Ottawa, in Canada, um, yeah, can be, yeah, can be as easy as this overthrown and then by a political decision. Okay. And and this I mean is this is this is stunning what we are seeing now and uh, such yeah, news yeah. I get on nearly on a weekly basis and and yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. Mm, but this this is this is really really unbelievable this is ridiculous this, this yes. happens yeah, yeah we need to to yes the scientific uh, values of of open and transparent debate we need to to keep this open otherwise yes. we end in a in a <laughs> in an undemocratic Absolutely. society it's i mean this Absolutely. is the first science yeah yes. this is the first time yeah um and another point that uh, scares me a lot uh yesterday uh, i had a nightmare to be quite honest i i woke up at four in the morning i didn't sleep today very well and um it's uh I, I, I dreamed of an um, explosion of a nuclear bomb and then my heart was beating and I couldn't imagine this scenario. And it was so frightening. And, uh, but uh, my nightmares are not irrational. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, unfortunately uh, like a um, few weeks ago, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Putin sends the worship Admiral uh, Gorshkov into the Atlantic, um, uh, armed with a new uh, hypersonic uh, cruise missile, also known as Zircon. And uh, this is only one example. Uh, also, uh, now, uh, 15 hours ago, um, there was an article published uh, which stated that South Africa is joining a military operation um, together with China and Russia. So we are getting closer and closer to a scenario that reminds me of the F first world war and and that reminds me of a catastrophic that we are heading and i can i yesterday i had an interview with fabian lea he's a blogger and youtuber and, and i asked him the same question why are the elites so dumb could they couldn't they see what we are going to what 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 is the next steps i mean i'm so afraid to be quite honest yes yes Definitely, I, I, I can fully understand what, what what you say and and what you feel. I mean, this is also what what we feel and where where we see see the danger. I mean, we we have just launched a petition end of last year with forty Nobel laureates signing and a lot of uh, knowledgeable um, scientists signing as first uh, signatures against uh, of nuclear war and against the, the escalation with which could lead to to a nuclear inferno at the end and i don't i'm honestly i must say i don't understand why people don't see this this danger i mean there's always the the argument putin is just bluffing he will never do it. I mean, this 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 might be correct, but if if not, we have no chance to to correct it. I mean, even even if there is a a point one or point oh oh one percent chance that he is not bluffing, if if that happens, it doesn't matter whether it was ninety nine percent probability or just one percent. We we just have this this one event when which. Is not predictable, and if that happens, we we blow up ourselves and, and the whole the whole world. And I I don't understand why why that is. It seems so difficult to to get 
into the, the, the head of the people. There, there, there have been lots of, lots of studies, for, for example, also from uh, uh, US Institute in, in Princeton, where they simulate one, what, what happens if, if one starts with just a, a small nuclear attack. Within five minutes, it, it, things escalate and, and are no longer controllable. And the, these, these things are known. And I think that there are also quite some military experts who, who see that and, and who, who say that. I just read a, a few days ago a very good interview with the former military advisor of our Chancellor Merkel, where he said, this, this is leading to, to a, a nuclear war. Why, why people don't, don't see that? And he, he, is, he is very clear and, and very straight in, in, in his arguments where he says, how can one imagine that, that this would, would not happen if one always puts in more and more and, and escalates more and more? And I don't know. I mean, is this, this is really difficult to understand why that does not get into the heads of, of, of people. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's frightening. Um, we know from the past the Cuba crisis, the, the Cuba missile yeah. crisis um, yeah, yeah. in the 60s, uh, where almost one second or one personal on a personal level one decision made the the differences and if this guy on on uh, on uh, on this level yeah uh changed his mind okay. we wouldn't uh, be here talking to each yeah. other so yes. it's yes. amazing how how fast it it can get yes 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 definitely and uh, from the history, we also know the Samson option. It's the name of the military analysts uh, and authors who um, had given um, to Israel deterrence strategy of massive uh, retaliation with nuclear weapons as the last resort against a country uh, who is invading or trying to, to destroy Israel. So uh, the first strike option. So if, if yeah. someone like Iran, for example, and so on is aggressive, then we have to, to nuke them and so on and so forth. And uh, we know that uh, on a high level, military generals and so on are sitting and, and, and making up the strategy. So yeah, it's 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 frightening that we as a humankind in the twenty first century are not evolved, and uh, we are yeah like animals beating up on each other instead of fighting climate crisis, instead of discovering the new planets, and instead of of yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah, and like you said, um, I read also a few days ago um, in the feminist uh, journal Emma. I read a wonderful article of the ex-general uh, Erich Watt, a German yeah. general who uh, also, uh, I mean, uh, maybe we refer yes. to the this, same, yes. This, this, this is exactly the same uh, interview that, I That I you mentioned. referred, yes, yes. It, yes. It was a wonderful interview. And then, yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, this is not, <laughs> this is not anybody. This is, uh, I mean, an uh, ex-general yeah. who worked and, and yeah, yeah, counseled exactly. Angela Merkel and then, yeah. High level yes. with yeah and um yeah this is this is frightening um um so um let's maybe let's get back uh, a step uh, let's get um a step back and um uh let's uh, let's discuss the question uh what's your take on on nuclear energy and maybe the next question is what's um your take on nuclear testing um a few months ago um i was at a very interesting peace conference and there was a scientist and um uh, uh, actor from a peace movement from the fiji islands and she was talking about what nuclear testing is uh, doing with her society. And there are children with diseases and there are a lot of deaths, despite not using it in, in aggressive sense, but just the nuclear testing is so aggressive to people all around the world. And um, some islands like the Fiji Islands and some people are affected. And 
Um, so uh, yeah, we have to to consider this. Um, um, so and and also nuclear energy. Some advocate and say this is greener than all the other energy, and this is only the the, the only option that we have. Maybe they are realistic. Maybe they are right. I don't know. And uh, so yeah, <laughs> it's a tough question. I know, but uh, let's let's <laughs> consider them. I think I think nuclear energy is is not the solution. Just because one 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 needs all the the fuel to 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 burn, and one has to treat the the waste. Even if there is no accident, we don't know how to treat the the waste, how to to store it. And I mean, at the moment, we we have the danger of a, of a nuclear war. But there is also the danger that, that some of the nuclear power plants is destroyed, leading to a similar catastrophe. So I think the, this this cannot be a solution. And I mean, I I think it's all all these these, these arguments now with with this. Uh, safe and and smaller nuclear power plants. I think this just directs into into the wrong way because I, I think even in in the very posit positive way of thinking that that these things might be possible and and might work and might be operatable in a safe way until all that is developed and until all that is proven it's too late we have to we, ha we have to act now right and i mean it's it's similar also with the with the uh fusion nuclear fusion which was always seen as the super green and super nice thing it is since 50 years under development and it's still not foreseeable when 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 it actually can work and then when it can be used to to produce energy if if everything would would work so i think the, this to to hope that that one has such a technical solution is is just putting us on the side track and leading us away from from the need to do something realistic now so I, I think nuclear power plants is definitely not not a solution, and I mean similar with with the with the uh, nuclear test. The, the, this is a this is a disaster. I remember when when I the funny story when when I uh, started a job in in France at at Sackley. Sackley is uh, is part of the um, atomic energy. Uh, uh, commission in in France, and I was very skeptical when I got this this job offer because they were in the past also involved in in nuclear uh, uh, development of nuclear bombs, and I thought, but I, I don't want to be connected with with anything like that. And people tried to convince me. I know now now everything is very different. We have nothing to do with that anymore, and. All is fine. And then just one day before I started the job there, uh, France uh, made some nuclear tests. Uh, then people from, from Saclay opposed that and, and said then this is bad, then this is irrational, we, we, we don't support that. And then they got immediately uh, punished because of the the, the public statement, because they, they are still member of the Atomic Energy Commission. So the, this was where, where I thought, exactly, the, this was why I didn't want to, to join this, these activities. Yeah, so I think the, the, the nuclear tests are, are a disaster. The, the, the underground tests as well as the, the atmospheric tests. So, yeah, absolutely. Um... And there are many uh, sites and stories of this. Uh, a few weeks ago, I get to know a person who work in Austria, in Vienna, 
for the uh, International Atomic uh, Energy Agency for the United mm -hmm. Nations. And uh, he said some positive and some negative stuff. And for example, um, for example, there there was a historical um, this experiment uh, uh, from uh, I believe some U.S. Uh, agency. Uh, they tried to build a crater uh, for civilian use, uh, so to speak. And um, uh, I don't remember exactly for what, uh, for mining maybe it was, or other civilian purposes, I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, but it was quite amazing that we can use some of them and there are some experiments for, yeah, civilian purposes, but yeah, <laughs> one have to wait uh, the, the, the use and the effect and the measurement and also okay what is the need and yeah can we find a better solution and there are arguments for and cons um yeah definitely definitely i mean this this i think is a is a typical example where perhaps from from the pure scientific point of view it's it's difficult to to design because scientifically it, it could be interesting to to study certain things but i think there one one has to to ask is it is it really needed and and do we want that because not not everything with, which is possible has to be done we can also decide we could do that but we don't because we we think this is too dangerous, this is not appropriate, so we don't do it. This is also a free decision we can take, not to do things. We are not forced to, to do everything when which is possible. And I think the, the, this, this makes the, the whole thing very complicated because the nuclear, ener nuclear energy companies have a lot of money they, they can offer very attractive jobs. They can offer not only financially attractive jobs, also from, from the scientific points, it, it could be very interesting, but the, the, the questions one, one wants to answer. So it, it, brings a, it brings us really in a dilemma that young scientists who, want to do something new have to decide whether they they go into attractive jobs in in the nuclear industry or they they take less attractive jobs in uh at the university if if they find find a job there or in, in, in a research institution. And then this, this is, I think this is a bad situation that one competes with a lot of money which is in, involved and people then have to decide, do I follow the path of, of having non-permanent jobs and time-limited contracts until my retirement age, or do I take a job with, which is well paid, which is also interesting? And this, I think, is 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 a bad bad situation. And and there, I think one one has to do something. And I mean, that with, without we come again back to to the issue of the war by blocking, for example scientists to to participate in in a project as a CERN or, or daisy which is on fundamental science when one at least one one pushes them into a direction that they might consider then i go to a military institute where i can get a job and where i can do interesting things so in instead of of blocking uh, institutes or, or countries to, to join common projects or to, to kick, kick a country out also with the financial support, one, one should do the, the, the opposite. One should say, yes, 
spend as much money you can spend that for peaceful projects for for peaceful research the less money the less money you can spend for 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 military purposes right so we could turn the argument around and say yes we welcome everybody who who wants to give money for for something when, which is useful for for humanity and i mean imagine if if one the the 100 100 billion euro one what what germany said they want to invest now in in military purpose imagine how much one could do with this 100 billion you could run CERN for 50 years just with that money and this this is i think it all boils boils down that, that one has to stop the 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 increase of of military budget and and military research and and put all all the the, the resources into something with which could bring us a step further absolutely i totally agree with you and um i was uh, uh reading a study uh what um, in order to show ordinary people what the money is uh, to, to to get the sense of the relation and because there are so much zeros and there are so big numbers that we cannot imagine i mean i don't have it in my pocket and <laughs> in my daily use i i don't um <laughs> my expenses are not so high so i cannot imagine and um the study showed that what uh, people can do with uh, so much money and for example gardening the, the city or building schools and so on so uh, one can find easily such uh, graphics yeah. and 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 in order to grasp uh, the amount of money that is spending on, on a negative thing, on destroying, uh, uh, yeah, other country and, and people, and yeah, it's 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 frightening. And um, also in the in the academic field of peace studies, uh, I can observe it. In, in I'm in many networks um, in the Herrschaftskritische Friedensforschung, for example, um, uh, critical peace uh, scientists um, that are gathering um, together and and. Um, on a monthly basis, we have meetings, and um, there we discuss the, the also the, the the climate, the the political climate, and papers get rejected, or maybe you get attacked uh, from the scientific community because you have a differentiate, uh, you you try to to differentiate and and to get the whole picture, and um, yeah, we 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 can observe it, and uh, it's a pity, and. Um, and 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 uh, I I uh, remember we we talked about this. Uh, now we get back to this point. Um, so one that um, argues, okay, when the uh, director of this institute do not condemn the Russian invasion, but uh, so he's not. Um, yeah, they are they are quitting their contracts or what else. Um, but now we have the same problems. Uh, uh, for example, yeah, now what 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 can we do people are afraid of losing their jobs so if you condemn it maybe the putin regime will uh, stop the funding or maybe they close the maybe even in, in such regimes who knows you get killed so they are putting their lives in danger and yeah they are maybe they are losing their jobs so one have to understand also the the that the civilian uh population is is to be treated differently and and also especially the scientific community and um yeah it's a pity that the the elites don't understand it yes definitely definitely i fully agree i mean it's of course the 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 war against ukraine is is terrible and and unjustified and illegal and, and it, it, it has to be stopped now. It had to be stopped even much earlier, but it, it is also a question what 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 will happen in, in, in future? I mean, at, at some stage, this war will, will end, maybe with, with many, many more, killed 
people on on all sides with with much more um, destroyed country and and cities, but but still, one one has one has to think one what will happen then, and one has to to think how how will we treat each other then. I mean, Russia is a is a enormously big country. When, what what do, do 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 people believe will 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 happen with with the country? It will not it will not disappear. It will be our neighbor. So we have to think what what. What will happen, and and how how can we continue? How how can we deal with with our neighbor in in future? Right, and for for that, I think it's it is important to not break break all the all the connections and and not break all. All uh, ties one 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 has, but still try to to communicate and and maybe also support people who have different opinions, but but where where it's extremely difficult to express them under the, the present condition. I mean, not 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 everybody has has a chance to to leave the country. I mean, now now with with uh, the, this uh, mobilization uh, last year, quite a lot of young students were afraid. They they had to go to 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 war. Of course, one can say yes. Now they are afraid. Before they they didn't say anything against the war, but. I mean, isn't it isn't it good that that people are afraid and don't want to go to war? I mean, this this is something positive, and not not something one 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 should criticize. Absolutely, I, I totally agree. And um, uh, to to correct any misunderstandings, I didn't meant um that uh, people shouldn't, uh, especially from the scientific community, shouldn't condemn the Russian invasion. I mean, quite the opposite, but I, I empathically, uh, I, I try to understand that the motivation, why people who are criticizing the, the regime and in private, if you talk to them, they, they criticize, condemn the invasion, but publicly they are afraid to do this. So, and um, I was uh, uh, naive when I started, um, a little bit naive when I started um, uh, studying because uh, I believe that science is like, uh, um, so an unsafe space where you can debate, where there is no hierarchy, where you can exchange ideas and there is creativity and so on and so forth. But then as I get involved deeper and deeper, especially in, into social science, political science, there is a lot of politics involved. There is a lot of hierarchy and power structures involved and narratives. So it's not really that free that I want it to be, but uh, and I believe it's the same in in, in hard science or in, in fundamental science, and maybe maybe it's the same there as well. So yeah, one have to understand the, the the motivation of people and and yeah, in order to 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 get a dialogue, in order to deconstruct this this white and black dualistic uh, way of, of thinking, yeah. Exactly. Thanks. Um, let's move on to my last question. It's a very important one because now we are facing um, a climate catastrophe. Let's call it catastrophe because um, <laughs> climate crisis is is a more <laughs> uh, a more yeah <laughs> uh, beautiful yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So in this time of of crisis. Uh, why do you think we need such peace activists and, and peace initiatives? And how can we think climate crisis, political crisis and war together in order to transform our society, in, in order to make a more just and, and peaceful 
and maybe sustainable society what what do we need and and yeah what what um what is for example uh, science for peace doing uh, in order to promote sustainability in order to promote peace yes this 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 is a very very important and, and interesting point i think the climate catastrophe is really the the most important and most pending and most challenging thing we we have to deal with and as we discussed before it is absolutely necessary then that people work together on on this global challenge in as as simple as as it is just exchanging measurement data but but then also trying to find solutions to to things and just to talk to each other and for that i think the idea we had in in science for peace that we we build bridges we we communicate with each other is is the central the central thing we need that and there i think science can can be perhaps again the driver to establish the this communication and to make clear that at least in the scientific sector we need the cooperation to solve these issues therefore i think what what we try to do with with this initiative could help at least to establish again contacts and, and to uh, reactivate contacts and, and cooperation the other thing is of course that quite a lot of resources are needed to to solve the the climate catastrophe or to prevent the climate catastrophe and these i mean we have a limited amount of of resources financially we we cannot just do everything and for for that i think it's so so counterproductive and so irrational to invest in military which, which is the, the the dirtiest thing you you can imagine for for climate i mean no nobody was, was ever asking for for an electric tank or co2 free tanks i mean the, 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 this is this is just impossible and it's ridiculous <laughs> yes and i mean we we spend now a lot of money in in that area and it it is even increasing i mean there, there are requests to increase the the uh, military budgets and we need all the resources to to solve the other challenges so i think that therefore it's absolutely necessary that uh, a stronger movement will be established to say no we we just cannot afford spending money in in these useless things absolutely and the stockholm institute for peace for example the 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 very famous peace institute um cipri uh, published yeah. uh, last year uh, a report where they uh, stated that um now we broke the 2 trillion uh, mark of military spending per year it's amazing uh, 2 trillion i mean <laughs> it's ridiculous yes um and um so um how can uh, one join science for peace um uh maybe listeners who are interested in in topics like climate uh, crisis or nuclear 
uh, testing or maybe open debates about science, about peace, about yeah, physic, uh, physics. Um, how can one join uh, this network? This is rather easy. One just sends a mail to me and then you will be included in the email list and you will get all the information with which we distribute. And you are invited to all the meetings with which we have every second week on, on Wednesday at five o'clock, which is open to, to everybody. And th this is also one of the good things of the Corona pandemic and all these, these virtual uh, meetings that we now have established and, and got used to having virtual meetings. And that offers the, the possibility that people from many different countries, from, from very different places, just can join for, for a meeting and discuss things. And this, this is happening also in the, in the science society meeting where people from, from different countries join and, and discuss relevant issues. So the science for peace is, is open to, to everybody, not only to, to scientists, also other people are, are welcome to join. Of course, with, with the aim of science for peace in mind. So of course we would not like to have people who would completely oppose this uh, intention, but everybody is, is welcome to join and to contribute. And it would be very nice if more people would join this, this initiative, of course. Mm, and maybe let's go back to the outputs and let's go back to the events. Uh, uh, are there any events uh, planned, uh, like public events or maybe uh, petitions uh, for peace or are there any maybe scientific projects or to educate um, ordinary people or what, what are the plans for the future so that, um, yeah, we can bring this, this also up? So there, there are not that many plans yet. There will be a, a series of talks on uh, militarization of uh, the, the airspace where we have experts on that. This, this will be coming in spring or several uh, talks on, on that. There will be also something on, again, on climate change and uh, militar, militarism. And we also plan a panel discussion on uh, recap of the uh, sanctions in the scientific sector, which will also happen in, in spring. So this is the kind of short-term plan. Then, of course, there are ideas to further promote and, and go, go steps further into this anti-nuclear weapon campaign. There is uh, thoughts together with the uh, IPPNW, the uh, uh, Physicians uh, Initiative, to do something together. And where we also discussed that maybe this, the central point should be really the, the climate issue. And that this could be a motivation to say, in order to, to be able to solve or to, to go a step towards that, we have to argue against nuclear weapons. We have to stand against nuclear weapons because that will destroy everything. And maybe that, that could be a kind of umbrella where all the, the different peace initiatives can, can come together together with the with the climate climate movement i think then this would be really a step forward and i guess also what we discussed before the the science for peace ideas could could help in trying to get contacts trying to get talking to together trying to 
organize common meetings, common conferences where, where people from every part in the world can participate and where we could do something against uh, the, the, the nuclear threat. I mean, there, there was just last year at the, the, the final document of the G20 where they argued we are in an area era of no war and uh, nuclear war is should should be prevented so we could take all those governments who signed that by their word and say yes we agree so please sign that you are not using it for the first as as the first uh, uh, strike to to go a step further so i think there there are many possibilities to 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 go a step further and i think we we should really try to make that happen that at least a, a nuclear nuclear threat and nuclear war is is banned by every every party and it will be then that we go towards dismantling of all the nuclear weapons uh, would be great yeah <laughs> would be great and i support your ideas and uh, projects um and uh, it's also very uh, interesting for me personally, for my PhD thesis, because I'm um, working on the uh, EU, um, European Union um, documents and I'll uh, have to analyze them um, in regard to um, artificial intelligence. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, so it would be also for me very important, uh, the sector of air, space, uh, defense sector, nanotechnology and and also the the drone the the unarmed um mm -hmm. uh vehicles uh military um equipment and so on and so forth so yeah okay. i would like to to join this group uh as a observer i'm not an expert in any sense i'm just reading papers and then <laughs> but uh yeah yes yes this is great you're you're very welcome to join I think you are already on my email list. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I would love to see such uh, events. And uh, yeah, um, I have to thank you very much for this great talk. I do not have any further question. I mean, um, do we need to add something? Uh... I think we, we discussed essentially everything. There are, of course, a lot of, lot of things we, we can further discuss, but maybe we leave like the, that uh, for... For example, the discussion, the discussion groups uh, about Cuba and many other yes, things. There exactly, are a lot of exactly. interesting yes. anecdotes and stories, I believe. Yes. So, yes. But maybe then that we leave for another <laughs> time. <then>. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. And, and um, yeah, it was a pleasure to getting to know the the science for peace uh, community and um, I thank you also very much for inviting me the last time uh, I could um, present uh, the organization and uh, my work and um, yeah I'm very thankful for that also thank you very much I, I thank you very much for the possibility to have this this interview I think the, this was my first real interview <laughs> so thank you very much and I hope that we can do something together to achieve these really challenging goals. Yeah, but that's not a good sign that this is your first interview because uh, 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 a political science student uh, <laughs> with, with uh, almost no organization, no funding, <laughs> have to do all this stuff. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> this shows how peace is not important enough in our society because our mainstream media do not shed some light on academics like you. And um, yeah, it's a pity, but <laughs> this is- Thank what, you very much. Yeah. <laughs>